hope hopefully you are in the right place if you have not had the opportunity take the time to introduce yourself in the chat right at the bottom of your screen at, in the toolbar. Also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please be sure to use the Q&A feature also at the bottom of your screen in the toolbar, and we will answer all of your questions once you submit them. Again, please remember to put all questions in the Q&A feature and introduce yourself in the chat feature. Now, I'm sure you're wondering who's behind the curtain today, so let me first introduce myself. My name is Ricky Brooks, and I am the Grants Manager for Pro Literacy. And later, you will hear from the magnificent Mr. Greg Stoltz, our Educational Sales Consultant and Training Coordinator. Today, we will discuss a variety of items in regards to the Pro Literacy Funds their requirements for eligibility, how to apply for and craft a strong proposal, the next steps after you submit an application, and finally, again, we'll answer any questions you submit using the Q&A feature. All right, so we don't wanna waste any time, so let's go ahead and get started with our very first fund, the National Book Fund. 27 years ago, the National Book Fund began providing local literacy programs with New Readers Press books. Through this fund, Pro Literacy has granted over three and a half million dollars in educational materials to local literacy programs, allowing them to use their other funds for program needs. Application cycle for the National Book Fund runs through from February 1st through March 15th. You can apply for materials listed on the National Book Fund order form only, no other materials, only new to readers press materials. It's available to download directly in the application and is the only order form that will be accepted. On average, we fund about 65% of applicants but this can fluctuate depending on how many applications we receive versus the support for literacy receives for the program through individual donors, foundations, and corporations. Pro literacy actively seeks support for the National Book Fund year round and only approves grants for the amount of funding raised for the program. To be eligible for a National Book Fund Award, it is important to have a clear and specific need for the materials being requested, and that those materials will be used for direct adult literacy instruction. If you have received an award in the last two years, you are not currently as eligible to apply for the National Book Fund. It is important that you review your application before submitting it, to ensure that you have answered all of the questions and include all of the required forms. Next, we have the Literacy Opportunity Fund, which grants awards to nonprofit organizations that provide literacy services directly to students. Funded by the Nora Roberts Foundation and administered by ProLiteracy, the Literacy Opportunity Fund grants of $3,000 to $6,000 to support general operating expenses. This includes expenditures like salaries, technology, supplies, and equipment, and also space rental fees. This new fund aims to meet the needs of literacy organizations of all types and sizes so that they may effectively and efficiently provide services to students. To be eligible for a Literacy Opportunity Fund, an organization must be a registered nonprofit with 501c3 status, have an employer identification number, provide literacy services directly to students, be located within the United States, 
and not have already received a literacy opportunity fund grant within the calendar year. The literacy opportunity fund grants are awarded quarterly throughout the year and the application deadlines for the remainder of this year are April 1st, July 1st, and October 1st. This fund we will discuss is the Write Her Future Institute. Proliteracy and Lancome work together to develop the Write Her Future Institute. Through this fund, adult education programs can apply for free one-year engine licenses for women adult learners. Engine, formerly identified as Voxy, is a personalized language learning platform that helps women gain the literacy skills they need to be competent and successful. When applying for the Write Her Future grant, you want to consider if your organization has female learners ready to onboard within 30 days of your award, and do those learners have adequate digital literacy skills in order to get the most out of using the platform. You also wanna consider if you're not familiar with Engine, uh, the opportunity and time to schedule a demonstration to ensure that this is the appropriate tool for your learners. As always with any grant application, you wanna be sure that you answer all of the questions and if awarded, you want to make sure that you provide feedback and include pictures and testimonials of student progress. Typically, engine licenses are awarded in increments of five and additional licenses can be requested if you have additional learners. And your learners must be engaging with the platform on a consistent basis. The last fund will be sharing with you today is the Mobile Learning Fund. Adult literacy instructors are increasingly using technology as a way to supplement learning. The Mobile Learning Fund assists in introducing technology to their learners. Many times programs are operating without the appropriate technology solutions to support their curriculum. The Mobile Learning Fund offers proven solutions that are affordable, easy to use, and engaging for learners. In today's environment, especially, virtual learning has become more important than ever, and the Mobile Learning Fund can fill the gap for your program and your learners. By the way, if you have male English language learners, you can apply for engine licenses through the Mobile Learning Fund. Organizations applying for a Mobile Learning Fund grant should be prepared to use the digital solution within three months of receiving the award. We unfortunately have had programs apply for this grant who cannot or will not be using the subscriptions in a timely manner. Therefore, we ask that when you apply for a mobile learning fund grant, that you have learners prepared and ready to use the subscription. Also, don't forget to include a completed order form when submitting your application. You want to make sure you take the time to identify each and every digital solution you would like to include uh, in, for use with your students. The products available through the Mobile Learning Fund are New Readers Press Online Learning, Learning Upgrade, Engine, Leamos, and News For You Online. Now we will have the magnificent Greg Stoltz, our educational sales and training coordinator, go over and provide us with a short summary of each product. Greg? Oh my goodness, Ricky, I, that happened really fast. The magnificent Greg Stoltz was just about to take a bite out of his apple and uh, then heard my name, so the apple will wait. Hi everyone, Greg Stoltz here. The magnificent part that Ricky added is gonna really be a big letdown, but I'll do my best today. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, call to your attention the, uh, the, the, the different digital uh, solutions that New Readers Press offers for the Mobile Learning Fund. First up is uh, the New Readers Press online learning platform powered by Bench Prep. Uh, using this, uh, this uh, 
actually it's 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 it's, it's a really exciting uh, platform. You can take your students from pre high school equivalency to at level preparation for the GED or the high set test in an interactive online learning environment that's accessible around the clock and on all devices. So uh, you know, your laptop um, and mobile devices, whether you're using a, a, a Chromebook, uh, you know, another type of tablet and for both Apple and Android devices. Um, each course covers the, the language arts, math, social studies and science and uh, and each course features pre-tests unit tests and post tests for all the subjects um, there's alignment to the college career readiness standards and uh, high school equivalency assessment targets you'll find that there's guided practice with uh, with answer explanations there's um, what I like, one of the things that I like is uh, is how they made it interactive for the learner so that it's more than just reading and answering a question. There's online note taking, um, bookmarking lessons and highlighting information so that uh, as the students uh, work through the, the, the various courses, they can come back and uh, and review what, you know, what they weren't confident in. Uh, by using the bookmarks and by looking at the notes that they took. Um, and I think that's a really, a really cool feature. Uh, in the pre-HSE courses, there's audio that's included. And that speaks to the fact that we have, you know, different, different learners. Uh, uh, some who, um, you know, some who get it by reading others who really benefit. My own daughter, my younger daughter is a classic example. Uh, she really struggled with the reading aspect, but if she could read along and listen at the same time, it just made a world of difference for her. So the audio is a great feature. Um, the audio also can play a big part for transitioning English language learners who are, you know, who are on the path to uh, high school equivalency uh, diploma. So uh, there are vocabulary flashcards games to change things up and make it more engaging, and even achievement badges uh, that they can earn. Some they'll fall over and just pick up, you know, uh, without really even trying, but others they have to work for. I'm a badge collector. I'm all about checking boxes, and, uh, uh, and so whenever I uh, play around in the online learning platform, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's fun for me to pick up a, a new achievement badge. Uh, uh, I'm a platelets donor at the Red Cross, and one of the things that I love to do is um, on my on my Red Cross app, I love to get the badges. You know, you you know, you were one of the insane people that came in on New Year's Day to give platelets. You know, here's your badge. My wife thinks I'm nuts, and maybe I am, but uh, so you know, the achievement badges are cool too. In short, just uh, the, these different features really just help the learners to stay motivated. And you know, you do know, motivation is so, so important when it comes to our adult learners. Uh, so, uh, so all of these features are really great. Uh, you'll find that um, among the other great features, there's an adaptive study calendar uh, that, uh, that they can use to help with pacing uh, and to keep them on course. Uh, there are other progress monitoring tools and uh, useful analytics for students and instructors alike. Uh, like, like what? Like time on task for reporting purposes. Um, there are private and group discussions and messaging boards. Uh, there's an instructor resource center in the learning management system and lots more. Students can even use mobile devices uh, uh, offline, uh, and, and they have that option as well. They just, uh, as long as they log in uh, on, while they're on Wi-Fi, then they can switch to airplane mode and work without using any data, which I think is a great feature too, because you know some of our students are on limited data plans, so um, or, or 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 go to an area where they lose a Wi-Fi connection, so that's important. Uh, coming this spring is our TABE online learning course that's going to cover reading, 
language and math at TAVE levels E, M, D, and A, and I'm really most excited about the level E because, you know, since the change from TAVE 9 and 10 to 11 and 12, uh, we've seen a number of our, of our learners drop from D to M or from M to E, and uh, uh, so the, the fact that we have an online course that speaks to those uh, adult learners who are now at the E level is really meaningful. Uh, there are unit reviews and a TABE practice test at the end of the course um, that provide practice with TABE style questions. So look for that uh, later this spring. We have uh, most of the, uh, well, I, I've seen uh, the reading and language complete already. So now we're working on the math and uh, working uh, night and day on, on, on the math courses. Uh, now I think about spent myself on NRP online learning. Let's move to the next slide. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Learning Upgrade. Awarded the grand prize for the best mobile app in the Barbara Bush Foundation Adult Literacy X Prize competition. Learning Upgrade offers, how many is it now? It's, it was 22, they got two more. There's 24 courses with 60 lessons in each. That's, that's nearly 1,500 lessons that include songs, videos, and or games to keep adult learners engaged and accelerate growth in literacy and math from the most basic level to GED and high set test prep. There's a digital literacy course that covers topics like um, computer and internet basics, file types and documents, uh, net etiquette, video conferencing, job search, uh, you know, responsible use, uh, and how to, how to uh, protect yourself using the internet, and a lot more. Uh, there's a brand new course for TOEFL and IELTS prep, and there's even more in the pipeline, and we have a lot of people who are already um, asking us <laughs> constantly, when are these courses going to be, going to be available? Because they've seen, uh, you know, they, they've seen that we're working on them. Uh, there are three um, up and coming 30 lesson courses. Uh, the first one is for work and life skills. And I cannot wait for that. That's coming this summer. There's a second one on financial literacy and a third on US citizenship. And we expect those two by uh, late fall or early winter of this year. So three new courses in addition to the 22 that are already on. Uh, learning Upgrade is just a really fun alternative and uh, emphasis on fun. Uh, it engages students in a way that's non-threatening. Uh, you know, so many uh, adults just you know, respond really well and spend a lot of their time on their mobile apps doing what? You know, candy crushing and other games. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is gamified learning. And we found with lots of research to back it up that they are binge learning. They'll get on there at, you know, at uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night or, you know, with insomnia, you know, they're up at three in the morning and they'll turn it on for a half hour and do two or three lessons. Uh, you know, and, 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 and then, you know, they can take it anywhere with them so that they're doing it in, uh, you know, in the doctor's office, in the waiting room. I can't remember a time when I went in for my doctor appointment and they said, we'll see you right away, Mr. Stoltz. No, I always wait 30, 45 minutes. And then I wait another 20 minutes in the cold waiting, you know, in the cold room on, a, on, on this, uh, in this cold chair. So, you know, they, they can access it anywhere, you know, uh, on the, on the bus, uh, doing their doing their laundry, you know, wh wherever they are and whenever, and that's uh, and that's really great. Uh, it's accessible via web, smartphone, tablet, just as is the online learning, yeah, and and the and the reason, well, for increased time on task. Uh, it, it features a newly upgraded learning management system, which does a lot more than the than than the uh, uh, the previous version, which was really great. Uh, with, uh, you know, before they upgraded it. Uh, learning Upgrade just gets results and it provides the reporting tools and data your program needs as well. 
Uh, so that's definitely another one to, to learn more about and possibly try on for size. Next up, we have Engine, which uh, until recently was known as Voxy and then Voxy Engine, and now we're just going with Engine. Uh, Engine delivers highly effective English instruction through authentic content using real media sources that are updated daily. Uh, I think we're well over 100,000 hours uh, of, uh, you know, of, um, of media resources uh, that they use and, and archive. Um, it's task-based language teaching. Uh, and and uh, meaning just giving students uh, giving students real life tasks to do using you know using these um, real media sources um, you know videos uh, news stories uh, recorded conversations photos and more. Engine is unique because it has this patented adaptive learning engine that provides personalized instruction on a, on a whole new level, constantly modern, monitoring student performance and assigning activities that address their specific needs. So it, what it does is it gives, uh, it gives learners, uh, it asks them questions about themselves and, and determines what level they are, uh, they need to be studying at as far as the complexity and language skills are concerned. But then it also asks them why they're studying, you know, what their purpose is, what their goals are, and beyond that, what their personal interests are. So that uh, the, um, so that for personalized instruction and lessons on their, on their own time, uh, the students are getting articles and, and videos and, um, and recordings and such that are all about their own personal interests. So uh, if the student indicates in the survey that they take that they're, that they're really into um, arts and entertainment, then these are the new stories and um, uh, uh, you know, real media sources that, that they're going to be uh, getting for their English lessons. And I just and I just love that about uh, about engine. Uh, so more about engine uh, that 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 makes it exceptional and different from other courses that I've seen out there. Uh, well, courses range in level from beginner literacy to advanced. I should say that. Uh, and you know, from general English proficiency and academic goals, including IELTS and TOEFL but also includes workforce readiness courses. And this I think is great because so many of our learners out there are saying, well, I, I need to improve my English so that I can get a job or get a better job. So there are courses on job interview prep, uh, general business skills, leadership and management in career clusters like the food and beverage industry healthcare, construction. And then there are career specific English courses uh, that are tantalizing, like for nurses, for home health aides, uh, sales, customer service, IT support, and th the list goes on and on. Uh, HIPAA, HVAC, phlebotomy, early childhood education is one of their newer courses, automotive, uh, electrical work, digital literacy, US citizenship, what else is new? Diversity, inclusion, social justice. I, folks, I could go on for another minute or two. I won't, but I could. And then, there, and then the shorter personalized units that I mentioned that, again, are going to reflect the students' hobbies and interests to make sure that they, that they stay engaged and motivated. There are scheduled proficiency assessments and detailed analytics for the students and the instructors. And again, like the online learning uh, platform that I that I talked about, around the clock mobile and web access across all devices, and all of these things combined to make Engine a, a powerful learning tool that I would love to help you explore, or your local sales rep would love to help you explore. Next thing I'm going to talk about is Leamos, meaning let's read. It's an easy to use pre. ESL or English as a new language online course 
that teaches non-literate Spanish-speaking adults to read and write in their native language. And here's what I thought was interesting. Research conducted with adults in the US in recent years shows that reading in the native language aids the acquisition of and reading ability in a second language. A study conducted with adult learners from diverse language backgrounds like Spanish, uh, Cambodian and Korean suggests that these learners can benefit from their native language literacy skills because there's a transfer in basic reading skills from that first language to the second language, irrespective of the scripts involved. Uh, that information, I, I actually I didn't, didn't pull from out of thin air. That's, was, that's from a report from Carlo and Skelton Sylvester in 1994 and a follow-up from Wagner and Vineski in 1999. Also in chapter 12 of her book, I Speak English, Proliteracy's own Ruth Colvin echoes these observations, advocating for native language literacy and for Spanish speakers specifically pro proposing Spanish literacy as a first step to English. So leamos. Uh, now, it, in leamos, the students learn syllables, words, and basic sentence structure through nine modules and 43 self-paced lessons that include audio support, there's a, a, a virtual tutor, there are worksheets, quizzes, diagnostic and summative assessment. There's an implementation guide and even training videos. And the curriculum in Leamos also meets key reading and listening components of CASAS, for those of you who uh, respect or rely on CASAS uh, in your state. And that is Leamos. Last but not least, I always save it for last because I tend to go down rabbit holes and talk forever about it. I won't today, but uh, it's one of my favorite resources. News for You, uh, the News for You newspaper, and News for You Online. It's our oldest at, uh, at New Readers Press. And News for You, uh, you know, it, its founder was our own um, beloved Dr. Bob, who, you know, rest in peace. Uh, left us years ago, but uh, he, um, he he created news for you with his SU students here in Syracuse, New York, uh, back in the 1950s, and it's been a part of New Readers Press uh, since we were founded. News for You Online is a weekly news source for adult learners. It's accessible 24/7 on any computer, tablet, or mobile device. Native English speakers and English language learners alike build foundational skills in the context of high interest, current events, and human interest stories. Every edition of the News For You online features seven articles from the Washington Post and Associated Press. Three of them are written at reading levels three to four in ESL speak, that's like a, a high beginning level, and four are written at reading levels four to six, or like a, a low intermediate. The stories spark discussion while honing skills in reading comprehension and fluency, uh, vocabulary, grammar skills, listening comprehension, and lots more. In addition to the seven weekly articles, News For You Online has a story archive with a search function. And that story archive goes back to, I think it's the I think it's the second week, but well, goes back to April of 2008. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's a lot of stories. There's also audio, an interactive crossword puzzle, a vocabulary-based word search. Um, what else is in the news view online? Exercises, a weekly poll, a tips for teachers feature, with over 70 suggested activities teachers can use with their students. This, I mean, this one resource could keep you going all week long. There's a, a weekly teacher's guide, uh, correlations to the college career readiness standards, and even a few instructional videos uh, on there for good measure to help you, to help you use it uh, to its fullest. 
And well, I could go on, I won't, I'll stop there. That is New Readers Press's digital product lineup. Please contact your state's New Readers Press sales rep for more information, a live demonstration, even a free trial. Uh, and you can find us on newreaderspress.com and right up at the top, you know, find your state sales rep uh, and it'll take you right to how to contact her or him. Um, you know, I've, I've said a lot in the three breaths that I took. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Ricky. Thanks everyone for your time. As promised, he was magnificent. Thank you so much, Greg. <laughs> You're hearing about those outstanding resources. I'm sure most of you are eager to apply for the Mobile Learning Fund. To apply for any of ProLiteracy's funds, you must visit our grant portal. And the link is here for your convenience. You will also find the link when you visit our website for each of the funds. Once you have accessed the login page of the grant portal, you can save it to your browser's favorite so you can access it easily and get back to it in the future. The online grant portal system will automatically save your application so you can work on it over time and you don't have to complete the entire thing in one sitting. At this point, we are accepting applications on a rolling basis for the Mobile Learning Fund and the Write Her Future Institute. However, when our funds are spent for the year, we will no longer be accepting applications. So again, there are, is no deadline for the Mobile Learning Fund and the Right Her Future Institute. However, there are deadlines for the National Book Fund and the Literacy Opportunity Fund. You can visit our website, proliteracy.org, for more information about application or deadlines. This is the logon page for our online grant portal. As you can see here, applicants must create their own account. The account is separate from our education network login. The online grant portal is used for many things and several users in your organization can have an account. If you have forgotten your password, you can click on forgot password indicated here with the red arrow and you can also email us for support. Once you log into the system, click apply on the top of the page. Then you'll see all of the processes that ProLiteracy is currently accepting applications for. Choose the fund you wish to apply for and click the blue apply button in the top right corner. You are eligible to apply for any of the funds listed with the exception of the National Book Fund if you were awarded in the last two years. Applying for one fund does not exclude you for, from applying for the others. So if you apply for a National Book Fund and, award, and are receive an award, you're more than welcome to also apply for a Mobile Learning Fund Award. When it comes to crafting a strong proposal, Following directions is the most important thing you can do. Make sure you submit all of the required forms and that you are submitting the most up-to-date forms. And the forms will be linked in the application. Also, be sure that you provide detailed answers in your narrative as to why your program needs the products and how your program and its learners will benefit from the products. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions you may have throughout the application process, and my email address will be shown on the screen at the end of the webinar. Applicants are notified of acceptance via email, and if you are awarded, you will be required to log back into your online account where you apply for a grant to electronically sign a grant agreement. For all funds ProLiteracy offers, the awardee must agree to acknowledge ProLiteracy in public awareness activities. Once the grant agreement is signed, your information will be forwarded to a New Reader's Press customer service representative for either onboarding 
or order fulfillment. Onboarding and training will be different depending on which products you are awarded. For the National Book Fund awardees will be assigned a final report that's due by June 30th of the following year. For Mobile Learning Fund and Write Her Future Institute uh, and also the Learning Opportunity Fund, awardees will be assigned a final report due one year from the award dates. However, per literacy may request a report quarterly. These reports allow for literacy to update statistics so we can seek out additional funding and to enhance the program. Photos and statements included in the evaluations are regularly used by pro-literacy when speaking to funders or promoting the Mobile Learning Fund, Write Her Future Institute, and Literacy Opportunity Fund. Remember, we are constantly raising funds so we can continue this program. So the information you are providing to us in your report is important for us to be able to continue offering these programs. It is important for you to remember your login information. Write it down somewhere safe or at least document or at least document the email you use to create your account. You can always click the forgot password button if you forget your password. We are going to continue to use this online grant portal for a variety of other applications, such as opportunities to pilot and test new programs with us. The system will automatically save all of the applications you submitted, whether you were accepted or denied, and also keep track and alert, uh, and alert you of any follow-up documents you need to submit. At this time, we will answer any questions you have. Ricky, there's a couple questions in the chat, or in, there's one in the chat and one in the question and answer. Um, the first question is, if we have a mobile learning fund award, are we prohibited from applying for the National Book Fund? Absolutely not. If you wish to apply for a mobile learning fund after receiving a National Book Fund award, you are more than welcome to. Thank you. And the next question is, for the National Book Fund, do we need to specify exactly which materials we want along with quantities? Are there publications that are more likely to be funded? Great question. So there will be a National Book Fund order form that is in the application. So when you click on that order form, you will want to enter uh, the materials you uh, are interested in and the quantities for each. And so there is um, a, indication, a line to indicate how many uh, of each book that you wish to have. And there are no um, advantages for certain books or others. Everything is on equal footing, uh, but we do ask that you make sure to complete that order form that's part of the application. Ricky, I, I want to jump in and just add to that. Um, that's a really great question, and, and Ricky's answer is absolutely correct. Um, I will say, having reviewed National Book Fund applications for the last eight years, um, I would encourage anybody that is asking for materials to make sure that they have a clear, well thought out plan of how they plan to use those materials, um, because sometimes that can make or break really, really worthwhile applications. Um, there is a question of like your instructional plan. So just think through of how you're going to use the materials you request. Um, and, and that's generally what will work um, well for, for people to, to get them funded. Thanks, Sarah. Questions? There was one other question in the question and answer section that Greg answered. I just want to read it out in case others had that question as well. Um, the question was, is the news for you only available in digital? And does digital require internet access? And Greg's answer was news for you is offered in print and digital format. It does require internet access and you can request a free two week online trial on the website or by contacting your state sales rep. Just in case others were wondering about that as well. 
Yes, and I'll jump in on, on this question as well. Um, you can request news for you online um, through the Mobile Learning Fund, and you can request the print version of news for you in the National Book Fund, just so people are aware that we do have two different ways you can get those covered, um, but they're just in two, two separate funds. I also saw that we had another question in regards to the webinar being uh, recorded. Yes, the webinar uh, will be available via our webinar playlist on YouTube. There's one more question, Ricky. If we have had a mobile learning fund, are we able to apply again? Yes, absolutely. If you previously received a mobile learning fund, uh, you can absolutely apply again. The National Book Fund and the Literacy Opportunity Funds are the only two uh, that preclude you from applying after uh, you've received one. So mobile learning fund, absolutely just you can reapply right away. Okay, a um, couple more questions coming in. Sure. Did I hear right that you can apply for a national book fund and a mobile learning fund? Absolutely, that is correct. You can apply for both. If you receive one, it does not exclude you from receiving the other. Thank you. And the next one, um, are you able to show sample successful national book fund grant applications? That is a great question. I'm going to have our project manager, senior project manager, Sarah Howell, answer that question. Yeah, so at this point, we do not have um, an application that was successful ready to show you. Um, if you email Ricky um, at her email, which I believe she can put up on the next slide. Ricky, do you, do you want to advance it? For sure. Um, we can work to get you an anonymous successful National Book Fund application so you can see that. So um, just, just for your own, own information, but just making sure that you're thoughtful and how you answer those questions. Um, especially, we, I, I feel like the most, the, the two really common places people lose points are their financial need. Um, being able to answer the, the financial need clearly is, is sometimes difficult for people. Um, and then also that, that implementation or um, the plan of, of how you plan to use those materials are, are really where people kind of lose, lose points. And also sometimes how they plan on showing impact of the materials. So how do you measure your students' progress um, using the materials that you that you plan to order from us? And and again, um, I know Ricky mentioned this earlier. Testimonials are really really important to pro literacy. Um, we are getting asked more and more from our funders for impact statistics and testimonials. And so, when you submit those final reports for any of the funding or even, even periodically, um, especially with like Mobile Learning Fund and Write Her Future, we will reach out to programs and ask for testimonials during the year so we can show our funders that impact. That helps us offer these grants um, and, and get the funding for them. So just make sure that you kind of have that thought process as, you, as you're awarded that I wanna collect testimonials, I wanna keep track of my students and have them write what they're learning so that we can share those when when needed. Sarah. One more question that just came in, Ricky, is when applying for multiple funds, are they done on the same application? They are not done on the same application. However, they are done in the same grant portal. So when you log into uh, our grant portal, you will be able to see which uh, funds are currently accepting applications, and each fund has its own separate application. Thanks, Ricky. That's all the questions that are there in the chat, unless anyone has to has any additional questions they want to put in. 
Awesome. Well, please know that we will continue to be available for any of your questions that need to be answered via uh, our email addresses. Um, my email address is uh, at the very top, grants at proliteracy.org. And the magnificent Greg Stoltz can be reached at uh, gstoltz at proliteracy.org. And again, um, the webinar will be available to uh, watch if you need to share it with other staff members or volunteers and we look forward to receiving your applications. Thank you again for attending today's Sponsor Pro Literacy webinar.